to my channel my name is Wolo I want to say thank you to everyone who have subscribed to my channel and have seen my videos I love to share useful information about life in Canada and um, anything that I know will be beneficial to anybody who sees my videos today I will be sharing information on the occupations in Canada but with a focus on Alberta. It's looking like I'm talking so much about, about Alberta this week. The last video was about Alberta and then this week again is still about Alberta. But as for next week, I think I will change focus. But today I want to talk about um, some of the occupations in Alberta, what the earnings look like and um, what the deductions look like after um, you get those earnings. So I will narrow down the occupation to just one occupation to do the analysis of um, what to expect in terms of earning if you find yourself in that occupation. So for people who are administrative assistants in Alberta or administ I won't say administrative assistants, I think administrative officers in Alberta, um, the um, starting wage is $29 per hour. And then for people who are accounting technicians, the starting wage is $26.41 per hour. Um, for people who are architects, the starting wage is $40 per hour. Then for people who are dentists, the starting wage is $85 per hour. And for people who are financial accountants, financial auditors, people who work in Deloitte and you know who have a CPA, um, I think they are categorized as managers. They, the starting um, salary or the starting wage is like $38 per hour. And for registered nurses, $29 per hour. And then you grow up from there to like $37, $40 per hour. So I will, um, you know, now focus on just one occupation so that if you find yourself in that occupation, you should know what to expect. So if you're a financial accountant um, and you're earning like $38 per hour, so you multiply $38 by the number of hours in a month, which is like 150 hours, uh, work hours in a month. Um, the 150 work hours is divided by seven, no, it's divided by 37.5 work hours in a week. So you have 37.5 hours per week. And when you're in Canada, the pay system is like bi-weekly. So companies pay weekly, but most companies in Canada pay bi-weekly. So if you're earning your salaries bi-weekly, you multiply what you earn per hour by the week, then multiply it by two weeks. So you know what you're going to get in two weeks time. So if you're earning $38 per hour, um, bi-weekly, you will be earning... $2,850 per hour. Now, this is the gross income of what you're going to earn if you're a financial auditor or a financial accountant. Remember, I the focus is on financial accountants because I want to do an analysis of how much the net income is going to be like when you um a financial accountant and earning $38 per hour living in Alberta. Remember, the focus is on Alberta, not in any other part of the province. The reason is because the tax bracket in Alberta is different from the tax bracket in Manitoba. And the tax bracket in Manitoba is also different from the tax bracket in Ontario. So the person who is earning $38 per hour in Alberta, by the time you put in all the factors and all the deductions, at the end of the day, the net income will be different from somebody who is earning $38 and doing the same position and living in Ontario. That's why I'm doing this analysis so that you'll be able to understand what it is like. So um, you have it at the back of your mind that when you come to Canada, it's the pay system is not the same because the tax brackets in each province are not the same. And um, I'm still focusing on the accounting profession, so I will still go into details. So let's say you're earning $38 per hour and then you're earning $2,850 bi-weekly. And uh, if you multiply that by 26 weeks in a year, you are earning about $74,100 in a year. So if you want to break it down, removing all the statutory deductions, and when I mean statutory deductions, I'm talking about the federal income tax, the provincial tax, 
um, the Canadian Pension Plan and the Employment Insurance in Canada. So these are the statutory deductions. There are other deductions that can be added to it, like union dues. And if your contributing, if your company is contributing to, um, let's say a defined defined benefit scheme, like maybe an RRSP or whatever, they can also deduct deduct from your salary. If there is any other um, benefit that um, requires deduction, it might be also deducted from your salary. So, but I'm focusing on the statutory. Um, deductions that cut across all, all um, employees in Canada. So for the statutory deduction, remember the person is earning $2,850 bi-weekly and the annual income is $74,100 annually. So the federal income tax is about $385.98. Then the provincial tax is um, $196.62. The Canadian Pension Plan is $138.48. And then the Employment Insurance is $46.17. So at the end of the day, what is deducted from the person's um, bi-weekly check or bi-weekly earnings is $767. I, I don't know the cents fraction, but uh, a total of $767 is deducted as um, taxes or as deductions, statutory deductions from the person's earnings. So what the person takes home at the end of the day is $2,082.75 if the person is living in Alberta. Now remember, Alberta's economy is still um, trying to come up and um, the cost of living is not so, so high um, compared to the cost of living in some other places like Ontario and uh, Vancouver. I would say Ontario in total, I would say Toronto, Toronto, the hub of Toronto itself. The cost of living is very high in Toronto, but and the cost of living is also very high in um, Vancouver, which is in British Columbia. So for somebody who is earning this amount of money, $2,850 bi-weekly, at the end of the day, what you take home is $2,080.75 and this is based on the statutory deductions. I didn't add other deductions like union dues and the others. I didn't add that. This is based on the statutory deductions. So this person is living in, let's say, Calgary, Alberta, and this is what the person is going to take home at the end of um, deductions, $2,082.75. Now, I'll, I want to compare that with somebody who is living in Ontario. Like I mentioned earlier, if you're living in Ontario, the tax bracket is different from the tax bracket in Alberta. They are not the same. The tax bracket in Manitoba is different from the tax bracket in Ontario, and they are not the same. So this person in Alberta is already taking home $2,082.75. $2 and if I'm going to use that same analysis for somebody who is working in the same capacity and living in Ontario, let's say the person is living in Toronto, and the person is also earning $38 um, per hour. And the person is working as a financial accountant or a financial auditor in Toronto. Um, the federal tax remains the same, but the provincial tax is different because like I said, the tax brackets are not the same. Each province has its own tax bracket. For the provincial tax in Ontario, the deduction will be $192.83 for CPP, is the same $138.48 and for EI it's also the same um, $46.17. So um, federal tax, CPP, EI, they are the same deductions across province but for um, provincial tax deduction they are not the same because of the provincial um, tax bracket. So now the total deduction that is going out from the person's earnings for somebody living in Ontario is $763.46 while the deduction for somebody living in Alberta is $767. Um, I didn't get the cents fraction. So the difference between these two provinces for somebody earning this amount of money per hour is just $4 and some cents. So the person is living in, on, in Toronto, the take home pay at the end of the day will be 
54 cents. Uh, while the person who is living in Alberta, the take home pay is $2,082.75. So the difference is just $4. But you remember the person who is living in Toronto, the person's um, cost of living is higher compared to the person who is living in Alberta, um, whose cost of living is lower. The cost of renting an apartment in Toronto is higher. The cost of renting an apartment in, in, in um, Calgary, let me use Calgary as an example, is lower compared to Toronto. So these are the comparisons and these are the factors you need to know um, when choosing a province where you want to live in. I will also be doing this analysis with Manitoba as well. And uh, Manitoba is a low-income province. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I mentioned that. But anyway, I will be doing this analysis across all provinces so that you have a better idea of what to expect. And I'll also be doing this analysis on different kinds of professions um, for medical doctors, for tech people, for all sorts of professions. I'll be doing this analysis um, from time to time. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye-bye.